Greetings. Today we're going to take a quick look at this intruder alarm power supply, and with moderately good reason. OpenReach are no longer supplying battery backup units with their fibre to the premises offerings unless you're a so-called vulnerable customer. And once they switch off the analog telephone network by 2025, and the copper network by 2027, that means that if the power goes off, so does your telephone line. Not good if you're in an area with poor or non-existent mobile signal, because there's then no fallback. So what can you do? You could invest in a cheap UPS, such as a CyberPower UT650 EIG, for about 50 quid, and run the mains power supplies for your optical network terminator, that's the fibre unit, and the broadband router from that. You could opt to spend 35 quid on a random name from Amazon with a 37 watt hour lithium ion battery, and chuck it in the bin when the battery eventually fails as the cells won't be user replaceable. You could spend less than a tenner for one from AliExpress, if you dare. Or you could go for something a little bit more rugged, a little bit more tried and tested, and pick up one of these intruder alarm power supplies which turn up on eBay from time to time. Elmdeen is one of the manufacturers you can look for. This one's not an Elmdeen, there's no branding anywhere on it, it just has a part number inside of L74, and a warranty date suggesting this one's made in 1999. I managed to find a newer version under the SeaTech brand, so I'm guessing it's one of theirs. The overall construction of these older models is much the same regardless of brand though. A transformer, in this case under the board, a fairly simple regulator and charging circuit, and space for a sealed lead acid battery. There are newer models with switch mode power supplies offering more efficiency, but those come with a correspondingly higher price tag, unless you're lucky you manage to blag yourself a cheap one. There are 24 volt fire alarm power supplies which actually put out 27.6 volts, but this is a 12 volt intruder alarm model, which is actually rated for 13.8 volts, and in this case puts out 13.6. Here's a close-up of the board, with some interesting component labelling. Only one resistor and one zero ohm link have an R designation. All the 10k resistors are designated Q1, Q2 and so on. There's a 2.2k resistor marked S1, and all the 1k resistors are marked U1, U2 and so on. Here's the same board with the trackside overlaid, so you can see how it all connects. And here's the schematic. I've changed the resistor designations on here, so they are all R prefixed. Move past the transformer and you can pretty much split the diagram down the middle. Everything to the left of the missing jumper link is the power supply circuit. Everything to the right is purely for monitoring. The power supply circuit is simple enough. Bridge rectifier, smoothing cap, and an LM317T adjustable voltage regulator. That's been set to give an output of 13.6 volts, which then connects via a fuse to the battery and another fuse to the output. No current limiting, the battery just takes what it wants. If the mains fails, D7 makes sure that the output of the regulator doesn't go too far above the input and damage it. D6 also offers protection, this time against reverse connection of the battery. If the battery is reversed, D6 will short it out and blow its fuse. To the right of the missing jumper link, which if fitted would provide a non-backed up supply on the front output terminal marked R, is the circuitry which deals with the front panel LEDs plus the tamper switch which would alert an alarm system if the lid was opened. That non-backed up supply feeds mains LED L1 and through that the base of T1. If the mains is on, L1 will light and T1 will shunt standby LED L2, turning it off. If the mains is off, L1 goes out, T1 turns off and L2 is lit as this gets power from the battery back supply. The circuit controlling battery fuse LED L3 is a little more complex. As long as the battery fuse is intact, there are two 10k resistors pulling T2's base up and keeping the LED off. If the fuse fails, one resistor is pulling up. But if the battery fuse is gone and the battery is disconnected, there's 10k pulling up and 20k pulling down, which is enough to turn on T2 and light the LED. With the battery connected, if the fuse is blown, the transistor base is now sitting midway between the regulated supply voltage and the battery voltage. Once the battery voltage settles down to its off-charge voltage, as long as there's about 1.2 volts difference between the two, then T2 should just start turning on and light the LED. As you can see, it works, but only if the battery has lost quite a bit of charge. The meter here is showing the voltage difference between the battery and the output. And the only way I was able to get this to work is by using this old battery instead of the one I had fitted. If I'd used the one I had fitted, it would have taken hours or even days before it would have dropped to the point where that light was going to start illuminating. 
The final monitoring circuit is much simpler and just monitors the output fuse, or at least the output voltage. If there's 13.6 volts present in the output, T3 is held off, and so is the output fail LED. If the fuse blows, then as long as there's no other supply in parallel with it, the voltage is going to drop to zero and turn on T3, turning on the LED. And that's pretty much it. 13.6 battery backed volts, and a circuit that you could strip half the components from and still use. But what if you don't want to stress the equipment you're running and want to give it exactly 12 volts? You can't just tweak the output voltage of the circuit as it'll undercharge the battery, but it ought to be doable with extra components, if you choose one of those components carefully. What I've got here are two 12 volt voltage regulators, a 7812 and an LM340AT12. Unfortunately, these aren't suitable, as they have a typical dropout voltage of 2 volts, meaning that they won't put out 12 volts unless the input voltage is at least 14 volts, so that's no good here. What should work is what's called a low dropout or LDO regulator. Some, such as the MIC 29150-12, have a dropout voltage of around half a volt and even less at low current draws, so should easily be able to sustain a rock-solid 12 volt output, even on battery. And as luck would have it, or rather as eBay and six quid would have it, I've got one. There's a bit of room on this mounting plate on which I can fit it. I'll add an insulating washer and pad so that the negative connection isn't tied to the earthed metal case. Incidentally, there's a pad and washer on the existing regulator too, because the tab on the LM317T isn't connected to ground. In this case, it's actually connected to the output. So you've got an earth connection there and the output voltage right alongside it. It's separated by a plastic spacer and this insulating pad. I'll use the top one for fitting the regulator as the bottom one is actually used for providing this earth connection on the board. And here it is wired in. Now if I was going to do this permanently, I'd use one end of that missing jumper connection for the output so the R terminal would now stand for regulated and not redundant. Hooking the meters up together with a small lamp load shows that we now have a rock solid 12 volt output alongside the 13.5 to 13.6 volt one. And if we shut off the main supply, the 12 volts is maintained, and I'd expect it to maintain that for about half the battery capacity at least. For smaller loads, it could be even longer. But what if one of these small power supplies isn't enough? Well, you could splash out on a switch mode one. This one, made by Hayden, is rated at 10 amps in total. It does have an output voltage of pretty much dead on 12 volts, but the power supply has an adjustment control in the corner. Push this up to 13.6 volts, connect your battery via a fuse to the second set of terminals, connect the outputs via a 12 volt low dropout regulator once more, bolt it to a metal plate of course, and job done. The battery in this case would have to go in an external case though or nearby because there's no actual room inside the box. So there you have it. A few options for if you don't qualify for a battery backup unit, but could do with one. It depends on how much room you've got, how tidy you want it all to be, but also what you need to connect to it. If all you have is a broadband router and a fiber unit, this sort of thing will do. And it's tried and trusted hardware used by alarm engineers and CCTV engineers for decades. If you've got equipment which requires a higher voltage though, such as a 48 volt wireless access point or a mains powered network switch, and I've got both of those, you'll have to go for the mains UPS version. Anyway, it's food for thought. Thanks for watching.